All right, the 2022-2023 regular season is over for the New York Knicks, who finished the season with 47 wins after a loss to the Pacers at the Garden in the regular season finale on Sunday. So let's recap the season and look ahead to the Knicks' first-round matchup with the Cavaliers. Joining me to do that is the founder and the co-host of Knicks Fan TV, the one and only CP, the franchise. CP, are you in playoff form right now? I got to make sure you're out the regular season into playoff form. Where are the vibes for you right now? Dex, the fans have been begging me to jump out the window with them in terms of their enthusiasm <laughs> with this Knicks team. I'm finally here. I'm ready. I'm excited. And the playoffs can't come soon enough. Knicks versus Cavs. It is going to be a blockbuster, man. I'm looking forward to it. All right. We got to make sure that CP doesn't jump out the window, people. So that means no predictions of a run to the finals or Eastern Conference finals. <laughs> but CP, I know you're a measured guy. You're going to keep it pretty even keel. I know that. Yeah. So. Here's what I'm going to do to start off, CP. I'm going to make you Professor CP here. Mm, Looking back okay. at the Knicks' regular season, what final letter grade would you give the Knicks yeah. for their performance this year? I'm going to give it an A, Dex. I'm, I'm going to give it an A. When you break this thing down, the acquisition of Jalen Brunson, what he's brought to this team, being a guy, an offensive dynamo, an elite shot creator, a closer for this team, a stabilizing force at the point guard position, an all-star in my book. Only 12 guys make the roster, but he was as good as any. So I'm going to chalk that one up to, to a win. That was... Leon Rose's home run. Julius Randle playing at an all-star level. How about I, uh, Emmanuel quickly in his third year in the running for NBA six man of the year, a favorite for six man of the year. How about the fact, Dexter, that with Tom Thibodeau, with this rotational change, he didn't go to his veterans. He didn't go to a Derrick Rose or an Evan Fournier. He went deeper with the youth movement quickly. Grimes, Miles McBride, the Knicks young draft talent, uh, Obi Toppin, the youngsters contributed in a major way to the turnaround of the season and contributing to this team, making it to the fifth seed. The Josh Hart acquisition at the trade deadline, that was a big, big pickup to solidify this Knicks bench, along with Isaiah Hartenstein's turnaround. So this turnaround, to see this team go 37-22 and 22 since the December 4th rotation change by Tom Thibodeau, I think it's a win. It's a, it's a successful season for the players, the front office, and the head coach Tom Thibodeau. And by the way, when he made that change on December 4th, the Knicks now, since then, had the third-ranked offense in the NBA. I think it's an A. 47 wins plus 10 over last year. It's an A for me. There you go with A for CP. He is not grading yeah. on a curve here, folks, giving the Knicks an A. A lot of good stuff. Hard to argue against that. Now, the question going into the playoffs, CP, we do not know the status of Julius Randle's availability for the playoffs. Yeah. So what is your level of concern if Randle is unable to go for the first few games or the entire series against the Cavs? I'm very concerned because I, I think they will still need Julius Randle to win this this series. Look, Obi Toppin has had an excellent stretch since Julius has been out. He's shooting the three ball well, which you hope he will carry forward into the season into the series because they will need Obi Toppin's three point shooting. But they're going to need their star to be good in this series, and and that is what Julius Randle has been for this team all year. Now he was seen at the Pacer game without his walking boot, so you hope that's an encouraging sign. There will be a question of whether Rust will play a factor. Actor. How will he be conditioning wise as as they spring right into playoff intensity and a tough matchup against a physical Cavaliers team, the number one defense in the NBA. So I am concerned with with Julius Randle. You, you have to hope that he does come back for game one because the Knicks will need him to, to win this series. All right, Knicks are going to need Randle if they're going to move forward in your eyes. So CP made you the professor before, but now it's time to put you in the hot seat. This is a two part question here. OK, one. Yeah. What are the keys to the Knicks winning their first playoff series since 2013? And two, what is your prediction for Knicks versus Cavs? Sure. So uh, two things. So offensively, we have to see how will they respond to when the Cavaliers try to take Jalen Brunson away from the game. Who is going to step up and emerge? And that is why I feel like the, the return of Julius Sarandle is so key because you're going to need guys that can play, make, and shot create to help take the pressure off of Jalen Brunson because you have to think that the Cavs are going to try to take him away. A, a byproduct of that is how well the Knicks will shoot the three. They had success against the Cavs in this season, in the regular season matchup, shooting about 38% from three. 
three. You want to see that continue. Quentin Grimes has been shooting the cover off the ball. He's shooting 48% from three in his last 10 games. You want to see that continue. Can he be, continue to stretch the floor for the Knicks? So their three-point shooting will be key. And the emergence or the play of a Julius Randle, even an R.J. Barrett, to create if Brunson is taken out of that game will be key. Now, defensively, Donovan Mitchell, Darius Garland, the point of attack defense has to be on point for the Knicks. How will they defend the pick and roll and keep the Cavs guards and their dynamic playmakers out of the paint? I think that will be key. The Cavaliers also shot the three ball fairly well against the Knicks, also shooting close to 38% from downtown in the four game series. And so the Knicks three point defense is going to have to tighten up. They're going to have to close those close out on, on the Cavs three point shooters, the Chetty Osmonds and Mitchell and Garland's of the world. But I think when it's all said and done, I think this Knicks bench will swing this series in the Knicks' favor. Emmanuel quickly has been playing lights out. The Josh Hart acquisition changes things. Obi Toppin, the way he's shooting the ball well, and Isaiah Hartenstein, the versatility that he's playing with, I think the Knicks have a stronger team there, and I think the bench is what's ultimately going to shift this series. I'm going Knicks in six. Knicks in six. Some of you might Knicks say. Knicks in six. Knicks in six. He said it with his chest. Some of you might say yeah. CP's jumping out the window. I don't think so. I like that pick, CP. I like that. I'm gonna, yeah. I'll save my pick for a little bit later in the week. But I, li- I like that pick there. Knicks in six. You heard it for CP, the franchise founder and co-host on Knicks Fan TV. Go check them out on YouTube. Hit that thumbs up button for your boy. CP, appreciate the analysis, the insight. I'll check in on you. Make sure you're not jumping out the window through the playoffs, okay? Dex, anytime, man. Always a pleasure. Thank you, my man.